God, God loves to do this. In fact, it's a principle of building anything. God always, the Bible says, start a thing from what? The end. He finishes it, then he what? Begins. If you know anything about building anything, you understand? Any, any contractor or developer knows this. First, he gets a blueprint. And then he see the end picture of what he wants. He don't just start building and hope aimlessly. Well, I am going to, I don't know. What are you building? I don't know. I am hoping if I keep building, maybe something will come. Only a fool works that way. Any developer, if you go to any part, even Toronto where you live, it takes a developer to come and stand and look at the land. And then he envisioned what he want, whether it's a complex, whether it's a mall, whether it's housing. And then he draw. And after he sees it completely with clear intent, and how much it's going to cost, then he what? Build it. You don't just start working. You have to have a clear intent and a clear goal or end. After you see the end, you start what? Build it. Only a fool build without no end. Who start driving with no place to go? Amen? God worked the same. The first thing we're going to do is read Ephesians chapter, amen, 1, 3 to 6. But to understand the word, you have to read, you have to almost read it backward to see how God works it. You have to see from the end, because God declared it from the end, then you understand the beginning. So let's, let's read. In Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 6, read, May blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ. Say, I am blessed in Christ. I am blessed in Christ. Say, the Bible says, you are blessed with every blessing in Christ. Yes. With every spiritual. Say, my blessings are spiritual. My blessings, my blessings are, are spiritual. spiritual. Given by the Holy Spirit. Given by the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. It's a blessing in the heavenly ranks. Blessing in the heavenly ranks. So there's a couple of things the Bible teaches you here. You are blessed in Christ. And your blessing is where? In the heavenly realms. It's in the heavenly country. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It went on to say, even as in his love he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. Amen. Say, God chose me in love. God, God chose me in love. love. For himself. For himself. In Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be, amen, Holy, consecrated, and set apart for him. And blameless in his sight. So God called, chose me to be holy. God chose me to be holy. And blameless. And blameless. In his sight. In his sight. Amen. Amen. Even above reproach before him in love. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us. Oh, I love that verse. When he was planning what he's going to do with you, he was doing it in love. To be adapted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his, in according with the purpose of his will, mm -hmm. because it pleased him, and was his kind intent, mm -hmm. so that we might be, amen, to the praise, and the commendation to his glorious grace, favor, and mercy, which he also freely bestowed on us, in the beloved. So God chose you and positioned you. You understand? To the praise. He go, what I have done, it is to be praised and celebrated. Amen. So he, 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 he put you in a place and, and done such a work in you that he, he go, it better be praised and commended. Amen. This is why Satan is always cursed. He's got, you don't deserve to be praised. You deserve to be cursed. Mm -hmm. But God said, no, they are holy and blameless in my sight. Amen. So those were the, those were the, 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 this is Ephesians. This is what Ephesians tells us. Now, I have summarized the essence of those three scriptures that we read, those three verses. Now, if you look one to four, the first one said this, you see, which was verse three. We are adapted and revealed as the children of God in Christ. The scripture teaches us God wanted, remember, when, when, when sin entered the world, we were separated from God. We were made in the image of God and became God's enemy. But God said, I had a plan that I planned in love to bring you back as my children. So I got you, re amen? I adapt you back in Christ. I forgive you and reborn you in Christ. So the scripture tells us we are adapted and revealed, not just adapted, you see, as the children of God through Christ or in 
Christ. This is the first principle. Amen. The second component says, God declare us consecrated, holy, blameless in His sight. So God said, you are my child, and the way how I see you is holy and what? Blameless. blameless. Tell somebody, I'm holy, I'm holy and, blameless. and blameless. Not working to be holy. Not Not working to be holy. I am holy. I am holy. Do you understand? You see, holiness and blamelessness come from who? God, not you. Amen. How did you become God's children? Because of anything you do? Nope. No. Nope. To become a child of God, God is the one who did it. He said, because it pleased me. It was my kind intent. <laughs> to become holy and blameless also don't come from you. It right. comes from God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And he said, because you're my children, and because you're holy and blameless, the third blessing, he goes... God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm or sphere. He said, because you're my child and because you're holy and blameless, I have blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Yes. So Dayton and Abraham, you see, and Korah got killed because God said, I declare Aaron, his sons and the Levites, to be holy and blameless in my sight. No one can serve me. And anyone come against them, I shall destroy them. Mm -hmm. You see, if somebody else realize what God has done, you will have the enemy telling you nonsense. Mm -hmm. Because God said you are holy and blameless in his sight. God said you are his child. God said he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. And he said what he has blessed, let no man what? Curse. 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 Hallelujah. In fact, God said it's so good in, in verse 6. He said, so we can be the praise of his glory, a celebration of his glory. He goes, it is to be praised. It is a celebration of my glorious work. Say, let, let, sure, to repeat this after me. My adaptation, my adaptation to become a child of God. To become a child, a child of God. God. Amen. My adaptation. My adaptation. My adaptation to become the children of God, become the children of God. And, my consecration, and my consecration and blamelessness and, blamelessness, and all the spiritual blessing it is to be praised to, be praised to, the, glory of God. to the glory of God. Listen to me. This is why yeah. Satan hates you. What yeah. you have become Amen. it is a praise and a glory. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. God make you yeah. God, Jesus truly undo, dissolve the work of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Satan had you as an outcast, a curse. Pathetic. And God did a work that he did in love. Amen. He planned it in love. Amen. He worked in love. Amen. It was his loving intention to get you adapted back as a child. To get you consecrated, counted among the whole, because only the holy things you understand? Can be with God and interplaying with God. This is why God said, nothing else must come and touch it or they'll die. You see, God did a work to get you back as his child, get you into the God family. Declare you're holy and blameless. You understand? Bless you with every heavenly, heavenly is the, heaven is the highest rank. He said, your blessings are from what? Above. And then he got such a work ought to be praised as a glorious work from God. Him. Amen. Your life, you see some of us, oh Lord, I, when the Lord must rock in this mess, Lord, uh. let me give it to them properly. Because I don't want to cheapen this work. I am saying your adaptation, your holiness and blameless, and your blessing ought to be praised. Amen. It is a glorious work. Yes. Amen. You, Amen. Amen. You, you ever see somebody, they were nobody. Yes. And something happened that their success is so radical, mm -hmm. you just have to praise it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan is always cussing the work of God because the work is just glorious. Yeah. And God said, my children, my church is a testimony of a glorious work. Yes. It's only the church is acting because you don't quite understand it is a glorious work. Yeah. Let, let, let me give you an example, brother. Let me put it this way. Let's use Kaya, Kaya Justice. Kaya just said, how many you think Kaya is beautiful and healthy? Amen. How many you think Kaya is beautiful and healthy? Amen. Now suppose I take Kaya, just the way she is right now, look how beautiful and healthy she is, and I took her outside and I put a lot of mud on her. 
I put the whole lot of mud in her. You understand? But you all know Kaya, you've seen her before. She's beautiful, and you know her exactly as she is. So now after I put a lot of mud in her, is she still beautiful and clean, or is she the mud? Which reality is she? Which one is Kaya? Is Kaya the mud, or is Kaya exactly the way she is? Exactly. She is, correct. Amen. She is not the mud. The mud is covering up who she Yes, yes. Are you listening to me, church? Yes. The mud is covering up who she Amen. God sees through that. He goes, no, she's not the mud. No. They're my children. Amen. They're holy and blameless, and they are blessed. You better Amen. pray. Somebody better shout. Amen. Amen. So Satan is always going to Kaya and everybody else. Look at you, you're muddy, you're nothing, you're dirty, you're this. But because we know we can know Kaya, don't listen to him. Yes, you are right. beautiful yes. and fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. We, we know our reality that the mud can't hide. Yes. Satan is always trying to show you something that is not. Yes. Try not to acknowledge the glorious work of mm. God. And yes. God would, my work is done. Did somebody better be praising me. You are God's child, holy and blameless in His sight. Yes. And blessed with every spiritual blessing to the praise of God's glory. Amen. It is God who makes you His child. It is God who declare you're holy and blameless. It is God who declare every spiritual blessing. You see why a lot of you are not enjoying a lot of the blessing? Because how oh, God is presenting you and saying you are, you are pretending like the mud child. And God is like, what are you doing? I didn't bless the mud. The mud is not even you. Yes, right. Yes. yes. What are you doing? Amen. So you're coming to God, and here's me, muddy, dirty. Um, and, and he's like, I don't know that person. No. Amen. I know the Levites. I know Herod. Amen. I know his son. And I, Amen. Are you listening? Yes, yes. There's no Dayton. There's no Abara. Mm. There's no Korah here. Mm. Not in my presence. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. I told you many times the Lord's not doing that much now. When I was young as a Christian, sometimes when I was looking at somebody, you gotta be careful how you're looking at them. You better start asking me to see them through my eyes. Yes. You are evaluating them from the mud. Mm -hmm. And the mud is not what? Yes. Them. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody you've been regenerated as a son and daughter of God. You have been regenerated as the son of God. Declare holy. Declare holy. Blameless. Blameless. In God's sight. In God's sight. Showered with blessings from heaven. Showered with blessings from heaven. Give us to God praise and glory. Amen. God said the work is to be to the praise. Yes, praise. What a glorious work. Thank you. This is why you have to worship. Hallelujah. Satan so spends a lot of time to convince you. You are not God's child because he knows what will happen. He spends a lot of time telling you you're not holy and blameless in God's sight. He spends a lot. You see, he knows to keep you from the real work because all of this, God had a reason. You'll see where I'm going. This is just the setup what God did fix to get something from you. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. What was Dayton? What was Dayton? You see, Korah and Abraham arguing about. They were literally arguing with Aaron and Moses. Yes, sir. That they are not, you yes, understand, holy, alone, you see, blameless in God's sight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And blessed to be doing the work that they have the right to do it too. Mm -hmm. And God said, no, no. I said they are. And you are not. <laughs> are you listening to me? Yes. They argued. They were trying to convince them that they shouldn't be doing the work. And anybody can do the work. And God said, no, 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 no. Only those adopted through Christ. Only those declared consecrated and holy, set Amen. apart. For me, consecration is to be set up, apart. Only those that are blessed with the heavenly way. Yes. Are you listening? The work of my hand deserves praise and glory. 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 So Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 teach us this. We'll continue the process because I still have more things to do. Amen. This is just preparation. See, I've been set up in place. I've, I've been, been set, set up, up in place. place. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Holy. Holy. I'm consecrated. And consecrated. Blameless. Blameless. 
in the sight of God. You see, this is where God said, if I don't blame you, who can? Amen. You, why do you listen to the devil? Mm. If I say you're a blessing and my daughter, mm. I'm holy. Mm. Yes. Why do you listen to the devil? Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why do you let him talk to you? Is he king of the universe? Are you listening? Yes. This is where God tells Moses, just step aside. I'm going to end this today. They can't talk to you because I have said this. No man can come up against it. Amen. Amen. Verse 7, Ephesians chapter 1, 7 through 12, we'll read. In him we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through the blood the remission, forgiveness of our offense, shortcoming and trespassing. Satan is always trying to bring you offense, your shortcoming and your trespass to you. You go, I don't care, I am forgiven, holy and blameless. Amen. Don't want to hear about it. Amen. In accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor, which he lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom, say God lavish. God lavish. Every kind of wisdom and understanding. Every kind of wisdom and understanding. And practical insight. And practical insight. And prudence. And prudence. You need to understand what God gives you. In order, God wanted to make sure you understand what He has done. So He said, I have to give you wisdom and understanding and insight. Mm -hmm. Or you wouldn't understand what I've done with you. Yes, yes. Or the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. to say, the reason He gives you this is that making known to us the mystery. Secrets of his will, of his plan, of his purpose. And it is this in accordance with his good pleasure, his mercy, merciful intention, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him. He planned for the maturity of the time and the climax of the age to unify all things. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. All things and head them up. And consummate them in Christ. Both things in heaven and things on earth. Mm -hmm. In him. We also are made God's heritage potion. And we obtain an inheritance. For we had been for ordained. Chosen and appointed. Beforehand. In accordance with his purpose. Who works out everything. In agreement with the counsel and design. Of his own will. Mm -hmm. So that we. Amen. So that we who first hope in Christ, who first put our confidence in Him, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of the glory. God said, I have positioned you and done some things with you that your life and your, the way you live is constantly to be praise and glory. Now, look at the summary. From 12 to 5, these were the summary we get out of there. The fifth one, God said, after, after he had finished with four, you must remember this, God is generous. Amen? Mm -hmm. God in his generosity has lavished every kind of wisdom and understanding upon us mm -hmm. so we can know his purpose and his will. The reason God so generously, amen, bestow upon you wisdom and understanding is so you can know his plans and purpose. Yeah. I am sorry. God didn't give you wisdom and understanding just so you can look smart. <laughs> he gave you something that you can relate and correspond what? To Him. Amen. The Bible said the purpose of the wisdom and the understanding was for you to know the wills and the plans and the purpose of God. God. So when God gives somebody wisdom and understanding, just like He told Aaron, when you read Numbers, God telling them exactly how everything is to do. He's given them insight. Yes. Wisdom and understanding how to serve him. He got less you, Aaron, and your sons, they all what? Die. die. Yes. God don't want you to die and to become his enemy again. So he has to give you what he wants to do it the way he wants. Yes. Don't we have this in the world? If I'm going to go and work for Sister Jackie, you understand? If she's any kind of company or any kind of boss, when I get there, what does she put me through? Training. Training and orientation. What is the training and orientation for? To make sure I work in the way how she wants me to work. If not, she has no right calling upon anything I do if it's wrong. She never give me what? Training. Mm -hmm. I work for a company. And when we are evaluated, if the people can't operate according to the company standard, the first thing our superiors will act, 
Did they went through training? How could they went through training and work and talk and act the way they do? And if they did went through training, how did you mark them off? How did you sign them off and said it's okay? Yeah. Didn't you see this? Yeah. They don't know to speak and act and serve. Mm -hmm. They go next to the brazen altar that they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this process? You know, I always can tell when some people grow up in church. People that grow up in church, and if they study the Old Testament, they're like Sister Mary, they're free to come up to the altar because God, they, they, you, you are not supposed to. <laughs> but in the New Testament, I always they, that scripture, that teaching is in them. But in the New Testament, they can because they are also priests and kings. Yes. They're the same as the priests, so they can. Yes. But if, what I see when I stand back, I go, this person learned Old Testament teaching. Yes. You weren't only the priest was allowed. Yes, yes. only the priest was allowed to come up. But yeah. that is not why I don't do it. Amen. Amen. Okay. But, but you, see, you, see, you see it, this teaching. You see, so the whole idea, you have to get wisdom and understanding to know how to serve what? God. Oh, perfect. So, uh, as, as you could see, when, when, you, when you read verse 3, say, the Bible said, well, actually from verse 2, it said, which he lavish upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight and prudent, making known to us the mystery, secrets of his will, of his plans and purpose. So the purpose of when God gives you wisdom and understanding is to get insight into his purpose and what? Plan and will. Yes. To make sure you and God is now working in what? Conflict. Yes. Yes. God wants to make sure what you are doing here is what he expected and intended to be done here from up there. Amen. So he said, I am going to give you. First of all, he said, I got to make you my child. You understand? Second, I gotta make, I, I'm going to declare and make you holy and blameless. Amen. Then I'm going to bless you with every spiritual blessing. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give you the spirit. If your evil fathers can give you good gifts, how much more I'm going to give you that Holy Spirit. Now you have capacity to be praised. Then I'm going to give you wisdom and understanding to know my will. When we in the church are not operating to God's will, purpose, and plan, it, typically you don't have the wisdom and understanding yet. And typically why is it because you're not living to the praise. You're probably denouncing your adaptation. You're denouncing your holiness or consecration. Or you're denouncing the blessing. Meaning you're not walking in consistency with what you are. Yes, yes. Kaya is believing she's the muddy child than the beautiful clean child. Mm. Are you listening to me? If Kaya walked properly as the clean child mm -hmm. in accordance to how she is, she'll get the wisdom and the understanding. Amen. Amen. You understand this process. Tell somebody, God has given me, me. not will give me, will it's past tense. God has given me, has given me. Wisdom. wisdom and understanding and, understanding. and, insight. and insight and prudence, and prudence. And prudence. to see into his will, to see his, his, will. Purpose. his purpose and his plan. And his plan. And his plan. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. you see, the Bible says, when Jesus come back, judgment begins in the church. Yep. Do you know what he's going to judge you on? These are the things, church, I'm going to show you. Do you know what he had done? Why weren't you praising and living to the glorious transformation that he has done? Why don't you know his will, his purpose? I always can tell if someone knows God's purpose, will and God, their life is different. Mm -hmm. When they don't do this, they kind of live as a, like a soldier in a platoon that don't understand the platoon mm -hmm. or the purpose of the platoon. They wonder, they kind of like... They're like, where you been? Uh, I went over here and I went over there. And what were you doing? I was cooking. They're just lost. There's no purpose to their life. Perfect. There's nothing significant. Do you understand? When they understand this, every hour, every moment is living with what? Purpose. Mm -hmm. Church, tell somebody, do you know your life has been called to purpose? Do you know that your life has been called to purpose? Do you know your life has been called to order? How many of you ever been in a meeting or an assembly and then the judge goes, order? Yes, Your life is not like before when you were lost. When Aaron and his sons and the Levites were called, they're not called to live how they used to live without order. They were called to specifics. Mm -hmm. The church is an instrument of specifics. Mm -hmm. She has been given wisdom, understanding, insight, and prudence to specific. It's not general. It's not general. It's God's will, God's plan, God's purpose. This is you. This is why he will evaluate you. Mm -hmm. He will judge you. You, you think you're going to be judging sin? 
Oh, come on, you're, you're long past such things. That'll be like the Levites being judged and being Levites. No. You're safe. What you're going to be judging, why aren't you living to the praise? Why don't you know God's will, purpose, thoughts, and plan? Yes. And I, I can tell you why you wouldn't know. You believe the dirt on the skin more than you believe what? The truth. The truth. God. The reality. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I said, God in his generous, say God is generous. God is generous. So generous. So generous. That he lavish every kind of wisdom and understanding Thank upon God. us. So we can know his purpose, plans, and will. So he can know his purpose, plans, and will. And 6 said, And he bring everything in heaven and on earth under Christ. Amen? Oh, we must see this plan. God brought everything both in heaven and earth, through and under Jesus. Oh, church, you have to wake up. We started this series with Romans 13. 11 and 12, ar 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 arouse yourself, wake up to reality. Reality, guys, you gotta wake up to the real. You must stop living in the false. Amen. Oh, I wish I had more time to preach to you. Mm. I'm always pressed for time. Mm. But you need to wake up. You must be aroused. Aroused me. Something has to start to start in you going, that man is preaching about me. That man is preaching what happened to me. That man is preaching what yes, God has done yes. for me. Yes. That man is speaking about my blessing. Yes. That man is speaking about my consecration. Yes. My blamelessness in the sight of God. Yes. That man is speaking about, you understand, the generosity God flow towards me. Oh, How the wisdom and understanding flow. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Jesus said in John, you are my friends. I do not hide things from you. Do you think God wants to hide his plans and thoughts? No. No, because if not, what he done cannot be what? Magnified. Yes. He needs you to see it. Yes. Yes. But Satan also needs you to see quite a bit. Mm. Some of us just know too much of things we shouldn't know. Oh, we know everything that's going on in the world. We know about the, um, I can't remember, what are they called? I don't, I, don't I don't know. Those people are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so no. yeah, the Kardashians, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know all about the Kardashians and Louis Vuitton. And, but you don't know your own purpose of your kingdom. You don't know what has happened to you. Oh, my God. You don't know how God is heading up everything. If God is heading up everything to Christ, if God. No, when you read Numbers 18. Every God tell the Levites this, Aaron his sons and them, he said, you are going to make, you understand, provision and so forth for all of the, the sins that the people commit, the other brothers and sisters, when they come in contact with my present, and you are unintentional. You, you have, they had a specific task, task that they had to deal with and so forth. So there were very important things they needed to be focused on and be very familiar with, to be dealing with. You cannot know more than the world about the world that you know about the kingdom of God that God is adding up. Now imagine this. So they have to make all the dealings and atonement for all the sins. And imagine instead of this, they're like, when well, we are working out in Egypt and they're doing everything and they know a lot about Egypt and nobody dealing with what? The affairs of God. This is the whole idea in the book of Malachi. All the priests that leave the church and went to work and left God business what? Unattended. The Bible says this. As we get in more and more deep into the end time, the love of the body of Christ will grow up cold. Meaning, they're not going to be working in the sanctuary in the presence of God. They'll go away and do their what? Okay. Own thing. Mm -hmm. They will go away and do their own thing. They will know everything. They will know what God is adding up. But they'll know what every other move and style is. Mm -hmm. You have to know your God. The Bible says God is adding up everything what? Under Christ. Both in heaven and in hurt. You, this is very important because you are playing a part in this. I know it's wonderful and I thought I have to praise you. It's to the glory. You understand? You are God's child. You are holy and consecrated. Every heavenly blessing. God's generosity is lavish wisdom and understanding and prudence and insight upon you. I praise you, Father. But I also have to charge you. All of it is to help bring everything what? 
on the Christ both in heaven and earth. Meaning all of the people on the earth have to be subject to what? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything in heaven has to be subject to Jesus. You are called to help to get everything to be subject to what? Under Jesus. Amen. If you don't know this, you don't know what you are doing. You don't know who you are, you don't know what God has done, and you don't know what you're doing in this planet. Therefore, most likely you will use time very poorly. Those that don't understand what God is doing and what God has done with them and where he's at in this time, use time, effort, and resource very poorly. Mm -hmm. They're like kids. It, it is the Proverbs 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Why give wealth to a fool when he has no heart to get wisdom? You, um, the unfortunate thing, you have it already, mm -hmm. but you will answer why you haven't use it well. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Everything is being handled. Verse 7 said, mm -hmm. again, verse 12, repeat, so we can live for the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. God's work is to be what? Celebrated. Wow. Verse 6, God said, you better celebrate this work. Verse 12, he repeats himself. He got, I am telling you, my work is to be celebrated. Wow. Which means he has no recognition. The greatest work has been done. Satan did a great work to separate God's children from them, from him. God did a greater work to get them what? Back. Mm -hmm. God did a greater work to make them holy and blameless. God did an even extraordinary work. Every spiritual blessing is bestowed upon them. He went forward and he said, every kind. The Bible, the Bible said just wisdom and understanding. He said every kind mm -hmm. of wisdom and understanding and insight and prudence. Mm -hmm. He got somebody better praise my work. <laughs> somebody better shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Church, you need to wake up. If you wake up and you see it, you will have a hard time. That's, oh. wow. Let's continue. So it showed you the work God had done in you personally. And it showed you it was his good intent. He wanted to head up everything that is in our, on the earth. Same as it is in heaven under Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. He yeah. said the work is to be praised. And we see all he has done. Now we need to see as a result where are you positioned. Mm -hmm. Say I'm now positioned. I am now positioned. Say I am free. I am free. Holy. Holy. Consecrated. Consecrated. Blameless in God's sight. And blessed. Filled with wisdom, in fact, every kind of wisdom, and understanding, and prudence, and insight, and position. Let's see why he positioned you. Let's continue now. Ephesians 6, Ephesians 2, 6 and 7 read. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together. Amen. Give us joint seating with him. In the heavenly sphere, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, he did this. Say the reason. Say God did this for a reason. God, God did this, this for, for a reason. reason. The scripture says he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come, amen, the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us, yes. amen, in Christ Jesus. Say God, listen to me, listen to me. Oh. Amen. Let me hold that to worship for me. So I can speak to <laughs> because what I want to do right now, you see, I want to go, I feel like running, <laughs> skipping. <laughs> Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. Oh, he has set my spirit free. Well, oh, I feel like running, <laughs> skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me, my Jesus, I said. Father, don't let me start. Let me control it. I am, I am coming there. I am going to run and skip. I am going to run and skip because it's what I feel like doing. You see, you've got to see a church. You've got to see what redemption has done for the redeemed. Hallelujah. Look what happened. It, it reads, God positioned you to demonstrate, you understand, is limitless. It is immeasurable generosity towards you. In essence, he put you at his right hand, so he has no choice but to bless you. And because he is unlimited and omnipotent, he got, 
Ego, I want to bless you in such a way, I put you in a position I can't help but blessing you. He said, I let you have cold seat with Jesus. Wow. Come on now. Said God is blessing me crazy. God is blessing me crazy. The scripture said the reason he did this, amen, that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches. He said, I want to bless you in such a way, it surpassed. It surpassed. So it's a, God raised you up with Christ and seat you at his right hand to demonstrate through the ages or over time if limitless riches and kindness towards you in Christ. God save you, adapt you. Do you understand? Declare your holy and blameless in his sight. Bestow and decree heavenly blessings upon you, set to be praised. Endow you with wisdom and understanding and insight. Do you understand? And prudence. And position you at the right hand of God to demonstrate how much he loves you and has blessing. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Church, you are positioned at the highest position. What God is trying to get you to do is to see it. If we are the one, with the help of the devil, interrupting, he demonstrating his blessing. She's going to kill me, but that's okay. Father, you'll make her forgive me. I love Mama, you coming. Sorry. You, I'm not going to be here, but I, we, need to, we need to do this. We must. Amen. And I'm sure I do it to her. I love my wife tremendously. But sometimes, and because I love my wife, it naturally makes me, I could be walking through a store, or I, you know, I want to pray for her, and I want to bless her, and I want to do, I constantly want to do, same thing with my children, a mother or a father, you know, my, um, my sister, sister Jane and sister Jazzy, they're a big woman now. But their mother still goes into store all the time and buy them stuff. I'm, I'm nearly 50 years old, and my sister who have raised me up, I've told you this before, I think she still thinks I'm a little boy. She still goes around and buys me anything she sees. She won't buy for she buy for me. She can't help. When you love someone, yes. there's a natural yes. outflow. Yes. But in this process, and this is what we do, I want to show you something we do. Sometimes my wife does things that block that because my mind gets focused on what she has done instead of constantly want to bless her. And I sure vice versa. Sometimes I do things instead of keeping her in that state where she wants to bless me, I'm doing things that making her focusing and, and jammed up on what I've done instead of what? The blessing. God has already blessed us. And he goes, I have positioned you now in Christ. He says, he goes, I'm not looking at you. I am looking at Christ where you are set forth holy and blameless so I can keep what? Blessing, blessing you. you. Because if God look at us, he will never bless us. No, no, no. But when he look at us through Jesus, yeah. he constantly, in essence, what stopped me from keep blessing my wife or stop my wife from blessing me? God said, uh -uh, I take that away by put you in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I promise you, Jazz, he's going to do thing or, or Jake to upset her mom to stop the blessing. So God knew man. So he said, I put you in something to keep the blessing one. <laughs> he said, I have positioned you co-seat with Jesus in order to demonstrate over time, over your life, over the ages, over the generation, my immeasurable blessing, limitless blessing, incomparable blessing towards you in Christ. Are you listening to in essence, what he said, you can't do nothing to, to mess up. You can only reject it. But I'm going to bless you. Yeah. Listen, you see, if you can start to live with this mindset that you will stop wasting time. Believe me, the enemy is smart. There's something you, can, you have to do. So far, I'm just talking what I call the positive side. There's a challenge inside that Satan will fight you to the nail. Yes. But you shouldn't be struggling in the positive side. Yes, because yes. the challenge inside is enough. Amen. Amen. Trust me. When you are struggling that, that you are adapted, you are holy and consecrated, and every heavenly blessing and you are positioned mm -hmm. for God's blessing, you can't even get to the work side. Mm -hmm. Because you can't even accept the blessed side. Wow. Did you understand this? Yeah. If Aaron and his son and his Levi are struggling just to be Levite priests, how can they even remember? They still have the work. To helping the people. What about all the people that are coming into God present and offending them? They still have the work to do. But if they can't even accept the priest, they can't do what? Mm -hmm. The work. Do you understand? Yeah. 
They can't even do the menial task. Yes! They're worried about puzzling you know, the other thing. Yeah. You, you got to get this part has to be settled. This is not what God will do. This is what God has done. Wow. So we get to stay in the light at all times. Yes. Yeah. This is why God gives you wisdom and understanding or revelation and insight and prudence. So you can understand what he has done and understand what he wants. We're coming to what he wants. So far I'm only talking what you have got. Do you understand this? Oh, hallelujah, oh, Father. Oh, Awake them now. Yeah. Arouse them to reality of where they are, what you have done. Yeah. Say, so I've been positioned. I've been positioned. With Jesus. With Jesus. At the right hand of God. At the right hand of so God. God can demonstrate. So God can demonstrate. Over time. Over my generation. Over my, generation. my family. My family. The, period the period of grace. The season of grace. Is limitless. Is limitless. Ooh. Immeasurable. Immeasurable. Kindness, Kindness. And, generosity and generosity towards us in Christ. Towards, towards us, us in Christ. Christ. Do you know how much God is blessing you or has blessed you? Oh, church, if you catch this and you truly get convicted, you will walk different. And you will talk different. And you will act different. I think I've told you the story that I heard. There was a slave, and he was captured by the English out of Africa. Mm -hmm. And he was a prince, and he knew his father was a king and queen. And there was a, a, another slave owner came uh, to visit this, 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 this um, plantation. Mm -hmm. And he saw he walked with a certain regalness and mm -hmm. stature to himself. Mm -hmm. And, and the, 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 the owner of the plantation saw the, man, the, the slave master looking, and he got, oh, you don't want him. He will cause you too much trouble. And he go, why? He's different. He go, but his father and mother were kings and queen, and he's a prince, and he knows it. So even though he's a slave, it does not change anything about him. He still carry himself as a prince. In all he do, and in all he think, and in all he say, he got nothing has been able to change. The mud shouldn't change. You know, I love children. This is why Jesus said. They said, how do you enter the kingdom of God? He grab a little child, he go, come. A kid can be muddy as what? Do you understand? They've been playing all day in the dirt, and they see their mother and father, and they run with the mud and jump. <laughs> they don't get the mud and the dirt, and you wearing a suit, what? Stop them. Wow. Because they don't see themselves as your child, and you as their. Amen. Oh, if you only can Amen. see God the same. Amen. <laughs> if you only can see. They don't care. They're going to mess up your $4,000 suit. They, I just want my mommy because, I, you understand? I am your son or daughter. Can you see, church, what God has done? Wow. If you see, you will feel like a run and skip and just praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Set. Let's continue the process. We still got a few more to go. And I still want to give you what to be aware of. Mm -hmm.